Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Hope you're all doing well this morning. Um, so this is our second day morning with Ayel Abigail, our guiding teacher for this week. Welcome, Yael. And we're focusing on the theme of Samadhi, a path of reliable joy. So I hope that you're all so far enjoying the very precise instructions that we've been receiving and are looking forward to building on it over the week. So if you are joining us for the first time, you can catch the recording from yesterday's practice um, in the Dharma library on our website. And all of the recordings for this week will be uploaded there as well. And we typically run these sessions. We have about 10 to 15 minutes of guidance, then 30, around 30 minutes of practice, and then some time for questions, answers, reflections. Um, and you can either type those in the chat or you can use the little raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen and we can bring you on screen to dialogue with your head. And as most of you know, these sessions are all run on dana, which is the beautiful Buddhist principle of mutual generosity, which means that these sessions are offered out of generosity. There's no price tag to sign up to come. Uh, Yahel is not given a fee, um, but it's all done with the understanding and the virtual, virtuous cycle of shared um, cooperation. So our community supports us financially. Those who can, of course, it's not always possible to offer something and that's totally fine. But when you can and when you feel the likeness of heart to give um, to support Sangha Live and our guiding teacher, that is a beautiful thing. And we thank you for your generosity. So to donate, you can do it any day this week up until midnight UK time on Friday, and that will be shared with your head as well. Sangha.live forward slash donate. And I wish you all a wonderful practice. Thank you. Thank you, Faith. And again, it's a pleasure to be here. I hope the sound is good enough. Uh, I went inside indoors in order to um, have the birds, the minas, and the kind of parrots that we have here um, give them outside. And in today's session, we will keep going, keep cultivating the quality of samadhi. And we'll do it in a slightly different way. So what is the quality of Samadhi? The quality of Samadhi is gatheredness, collectedness, harmonization of heart and mind. It's quite a central quality in the Buddhist practice, in the practice of meditation. The Buddha put a lot of emphasis on it and for a good reason. When the mind is scattered, the powers of our mind are just flowing all around. And there isn't a sense of power, a sense of coherency, and sense of depth, which is also a kind of definition for samadhi. There isn't so much availability of the being because the mind is, again, just busy with this and that. And on ground of scatteredness, it, it's quite difficult to deepen in insight. The quality of samadhi brings coherency, a sense of depth, a sense of integration. The mind and the heart are not fragmented. From that, the perception of inner and outer becomes malleable. One can play with how things are perceived inside and out. And from that, joy and metta, kindness, flow naturally. And that very malleability of, insight, uh, of, of perception leads to deeper and deeper insights, again, quite naturally. 
So that's the quality of samadhi. We all have it. It's a natural quality, but we can cultivate it more and more and make it a resource for us in our lives. It's a lifelong exploration. It's a lifelong cultivation. So it's not like, you know, I succeed or I don't, but it's more, hmm, how can I support it to deepen? I said yesterday, there are a few ways to cultivate samadhi, probably many ways, but in the Buddhist world, there are at least a few ways. What they all share, at least if we follow the orientation of samadhi that's implied in the Pali Canon, what they all share is the sense of the whole body being harmonized and homogenized around a relatively pleasurable feeling that's coming from the meditation that we can gather our hearts and bodies around. If you want, you can imagine yourself or someone sitting, could be walking, could be standing, could be lying down, but the whole body is kind of suffused with a certain kind of pleasure. Now, that pleasure doesn't need to be intense or like anything extreme about it, but it's a general sense of well-being. And yes, it can deepen and become more and more refined. So how do we build there? One method to do that will be with the breath. This is what we did yesterday, breathing in and out in a way that's pleasurable and spreading the sense of the breath in the whole body. Tomorrow, we will go back to that technique. Today, I wanted to bring a slightly different technique that may be quite familiar for many of you, not necessarily with the orientation of Samadhi. And for some, it can be more can be a softer way in, a more organic way in. And for some people that don't really like working with the breath, which is completely fine, that can be an alternative route. So the path I wanted to present today is the path of practice of metta, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. What is metta? Metta is kind intention is loving kindness, is turning to yourself or to others with the simple, the simple wish, the simple intention, may you be well. Again, a very profound and fundamental um, intention and orientation in Dharma practice. There are many ways and many reasons to practice metta. Metta is not only in the service of samadhi, but it is also in the service of samadhi. One can practice metta with that orientation. Why? Because metta practice, the intention of kindness, loving kindness, is fun. The body loves it, the mind loves it, the heart loves it. Think of times in, you, in which you were full or somewhat full of ill will or a sense of comparison, you know, measuring self and other or having some um, ill will towards yourself. That's an extremely unpleasant <laughs> you know, environment and unpleasant inner world to have, to be in. It's fragmented and fragmenting. It creates kind of boundaries and agitation. Metaphor intention goes exactly in the other direction, in the direction of harmonization, of dissolving of boundaries, of a sense of integration, a sense of connection and intimacy. And all that contributes to samadhi. 
In order to take the meta in the direction of samadhi, one can emphasize the sense of the meta with the whole body. And in it, maybe especially tuning to somewhat pleasurable, somewhat lovely frequencies, somewhat lovely um, vibrations in the field of the body that are associated with or that come about through the meta. It's not a difficult thing to do. It just takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of cultivation. The technique of meta is quite simple. You sit there. Of course, you can also stand, you can also walk back and forth, you can also lie down. And you make yourself sensitive to your whole body. And like I said yesterday, the sensitivity to the whole body doesn't need to be uh, um, limited to the boundaries of the skin, the boundaries of the shape of the body. It can be a little bit more general and a bit more broad. And it's actually helpful for samadhi that it's a bit more broad. It's like a field of awareness, a field of sensitivity. And the body is full of and surrounded by such awareness, such sensitivity. That sensitivity to the whole body will tend to shrink, it will tend to close, you can stretch it open again and again. And that in and of itself is a kind of, it's actually quite a lovely samadhi practice, sensitivity to the whole body stretching again and again. While yesterday we worked with the center with the breath, now the center will be the metta intention, the metta full intention. How do we cultivate a metaphor intention? Sometimes you don't need much. You just sit there with the sense of the whole body and cultivate a kind, loving intention towards your experience here and now. And that, that is maybe something that we'll emphasize more later in the week. But sometimes you want a slightly richer structure. So you can invite someone. Today we'll work with a few someones, a few figures. One is yourself, just the experience of yourself here. The other one will be a person that's, that is very easy for you to radiate goodwill towards. And the third figure or option will be all beings, so going quite wide. So you're bringing the memory or the sense of one of those, yourself here, a beloved person, or all beings. And then you want to encourage a sense of metta towards them. How do you do that? One simple way to do it, which is in a way kind of technical, but it's surprisingly effective, is by using phrases. We are speaking with ourselves all the time. So we can make that inner speech simple and in the service of metta. Some of you may have metaphrases already, use them. Otherwise, you can choose something very simple. May you be well. May I be well. Or if there is a different phrase that's resonant for you, go for that one, it's fine. But keep it very simple and straightforward. May you be well. Something that a two-year-old, maybe three-year-old kid can understand easily. We want to simplify the mind. We can also use imagination. We can radiate light. We can imagine light radiating from our heart, suffusing the whole body, maybe spreading out. If we're working with a beloved person, we can radiate the light towards them. Let them be suffused with light as well. So there is light around us and around them. And you can make the light in any color that you wish. Like we're speaking with ourselves all the time, we are imagining ourselves and others all the time. We are imagining our bodies at the time in which we experience them. Actually, experience and imagination are inseparable. So we might as well imagine in a way that's helpful. Imagine your body suffused with metta, radiate that metta to another. Again here, there are a lot of variations and actually 
instead of me giving more variations, I'll just tell you that you can be creative with your meta practice. So we have, have all whole body sensitivity, we have inner speech, we have imagination, and that's just in the service of stabilizing the mind and heart on the loving intention towards self and other. Now, at some point, it may be that through the meta, there will be some sense of loveliness, some sense of pleasure, some sense of resource. About. If that comes about, let yourself enjoy that. Right? Enjoyment is a part. Right, that's enough for guidance. Let's practice together. So do please find a way to sit or find a posture that works for you today. The body will be different in different days. So check in with yourself. What will support you? What will allow you a sense of ease and settledness and also uprightness and openness? Knowing that the body loves both in different balances. You can invite the lower part of the body to sink in a little bit into the ground, into the earth. I will turn off the video for a few seconds to allow the, the voice, to allow the sound to flow more easily. So again, relaxing the tension from the lower part of the body, letting it sink into the earth. You can even imagine tiny roots going down. And allow the upper part of the body to be open and upright. In a way that feels easeful. Don't add pressure. But invite your body to find its way up. Trust that it wants to do that.
and relax all the muscles that don't really need to work. You can play a small game with yourself, asking yourself, how much can I relax the muscles of the body while still maintaining an upright posture? And you may be surprised of how much relaxation is possible. So to give yourself this gift, you can scan your body gently from top to bottom. Relaxing the face and the head. Dissolving the inner demand that it should be or look or feel in any way or in any particular way. And then going down, back of the neck and the throat. shoulders and the arms and the hands, just sensing in and relaxing, softening. To the palms and then down down through the back, down the spine, the right side, the left side, touching and softening. It's a kind of embodiment of metta. And around the tailbone, and into the pelvis and down the legs. And then the belly and the chest. You can take a few breaths and with them feel the whole body, sensitive to the whole body.
and allowing lighter sensitivity to be a bit wider, a bit broader than, than the boundaries of the physical bodies we are sitting in and surrounded by. Loving, warm sensitivity and awareness. For some, it may be helpful to find the center for the bodily sensitivity. With metta, the heart area can be a natural center. Or you can locate it in a different part of the body if you prefer. And you can invite your sensitivity to radiate from there. Allow it to drop down from the head area where it's usually centered, down, down to the heart or lower than that. And from that center, radiate out to feel the whole body. Let your awareness, let the sensitivity to the whole body be a loving sensitivity, caring sensitivity. As if the awareness is telling you, may you be well. May you be held with kindness. If you wish, you can take one of these phrases or a different one and repeat it. See if you can do that in a way that feels natural, just naturally replacing the automatic inner speech. It's such simple and generous offer. May you be well, radiating this to your whole body.
the sensitivity to the whole body will tend to shrink. You're invited to open it again and again. You can do that more energetically, stretching, expanding, or quite gently receiving the sense of the whole body. You may need to do this many, many, many times. It's great. And whenever you're opening, whenever you're, you're stretching, tuning with kind intention, may you be well, or may I be well. See if you can be gentle. You don't need to hammer it in. Just inclining the mind towards kindness. Maybe even feeling how it feels to be held in kindness, suffused with kindness to some extent. Enjoy what's present. Don't push for perfection with this. If you wish, you can imagine the body surrounded and full of light. Maybe it's a somewhat warm light carrying the quality of kindness, of care. Maybe it's radiating out from the heart. suffusing and surrounding the body, or maybe it's just there surrounding and holding the body. All that is pleasant, unpleasant and neutral is welcome and held in this way. sensitive to the whole body and caring for the metta with phrases or imagination or just with intention.
And if it feels right, if you wish, you can invite the metta to radiate out. And invite another person, another figure, maybe someone that is quite easy and natural for you to radiate metta to. Someone that when you think of them or imagine them, easily and intuitively you want them to be well. You want them to be held in kindness. And invite them to sit here with you, or stand, or walk, or lie down here with you. The sense of them doesn't need to be precise. Don't worry about that. But you have some sense. Ah, it's you. You're here. And just notice what happens, sensitive to the whole body and sensitive to their presence. Perhaps there is already a sense of metta flowing through. And it can be natural to support that or nourish that intention with phrases. So may you be well, may you be held with kindness. Or may both of us, if you prefer. Or the meta can radiate with the imagination that light suffusing your, your body can radiate to them, hold them as well. Do notice if you're doing too much effort or pressing. The work of metta is a gentle cultivation. It can become very powerful, but pressure is really not helpful. Let yourself be open, sensitive. But don't push too much. May you be well. May you be held with kindness. Let us just sit with that for a few minutes now.
you can choose how you want to balance it between the sense of yourself and the sense of other. It's patiently cultivating metta. And you can check with yourself at this point. If there is any sense of well-being, any sense of ease, harmonization, expansion of the body, even relative pleasure, And if there is such a sense, let yourself enjoy that. Let it join the stream. Infuse the metta. It is as if through this relative ease or pleasure, your body is participating, radiating metta. If you are still working with the beloved other, you can thank them. Wish them a good rest of the day. And centering back with the sense of your whole body. And from here, invite the metta to radiate out. You can be sensitive to the front part of the body, the legs, the pelvis, the belly, chest, head. Invite the energy, the intention of metta to suffuse the front part of the body and then pulse out, or pulsate out, radiate out to all the beings and maybe all the things in front of you. To the whole world in this direction. You can imagine countless beings there. And going about their day, going about their life. May you be well. May you be held in kindness. It's 
sensitive to the right part of the body, to the leg and the pelvis and the torso area, and the shoulder and hands and face. Inviting the meta energy to flow through there. Kindness, filling the body, holding the body and pulsating out, radiating out. To the whole world, to all beings. In this same way to the back part of the body and the countless beings that are there behind you. Humans, animals. and the other kinds of beings you perceive to be there. Then to the left side of the body. And then invite yourself to sit there. Kindness, gently radiating. Maybe from your heart, through your body, towards the whole world, in all directions. Relax into that. And there, on this ground, you can invite yourself to drop the meditative intention, let your body relax, and your eyes to open. Thank you. Thank you for practicing in this way. Okay. For these 10 minutes we have together, you are very welcome to share any questions reflections, sharings that you would want to share. You can do that with a raise hand option and then we'll invite you on screen, which would be lovely just to hear voices. Or you're very welcome to write on the chat. And actually, I do want to encourage you to think if there is a question that maybe asking it can take your interest a little bit deeper, can allow you to open do something more with your practice or clarify something. And if something of that comes up, please do ask.
Oh. If you're not asking at the moment or thinking, you may use this time as a very precious in-between time, right? There is meditation, then we go about our things and maybe do more complex mental work or different mental work. But these times in between in which you don't need to do so much are actually very valuable. You can keep cultivating metta or caring for your whole body sensitivity while you're in a more simple kind of non-meditative or not formal meditation situation. Hmm. Thanks, Yvonne. All right, seems like there, there aren't many questions. So I'll tell you a story. You may have heard this story. The story is about the Buddha. And it's something about the way Samadhi, the practice of Samadhi became quite central uh, for the Buddha's path to awakening. So the Buddha, some of you may know, uh, spent a long time practicing ascetic practices. He left his life as quite a well-off person and decided to go about a spiritual journey. And in his, in his first kind of round of doing that, he was quite invested in doing ascetic practices, kind of um, taking the body to the boundaries of what it can be like and still alive in order to transcend. Huh. Now I see there are questions. So I'll keep going with this story tomorrow. You know what? Yeah, I'll keep going with this story tomorrow. A question. I have internal fight. Having a hard time feel compassion for others gives me feeling of being too self self centered. How do I deal with this? So, um, thanks. That's a good question. Um, I think I have two responses to it. One, it's like for some people, it's hard to radiate meta or compassion to others in meditation, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually a problem in their life. So if that's the case, I wouldn't take that as a sign that it's necessarily a problem. It can be a problem with technique or the mode of applying attention, uh, which is actually not that much of a big deal. And it shouldn't indicate that one is lacking in compassion kind of more generally. That's one response. Another response is some people, they just need quite a lot of compassion and meta practice towards themselves. And that's can, that can be quite okay. And then in the context of meta and compassion towards oneself, one can feel, huh, when I'm not compassionate to others, it's actually quite painful. Like it's not a great place to be in. And out of compassion for oneself, one creates the motivation to be compassionate towards others. And it becomes like an inner motivation. And then it's much easier to do. Um, and again, maybe in meditation, but if not, it's fine. It's actually, again, it's not, necessarily that if it's lacking in the meditation, it means that it's not there in life. So thank you. Then another question. While most was positive, there was a time when things became dark. What sense can be made of it? However, the overall result is I do feel deeply relaxed now. Thank you, very healing, I feel. Thank you, that's great to hear. Um, so I would, I would actually question, all right, dark, because of what or in what way. It could be that the darkness was a little bit like 
in terms of a lack of energy. And that makes sense. In a way, the meta practice is a bit less energizing than the breath practice for some people. It's a more, it's, it's kind of, it's a bit more soothing, more calming. Um, if it's coming from that, from a kind of drop in the energy, I would emphasize the sensitivity to the, old, to the whole body and maybe even broader. Or the meta to all beings, like we did in the end, it can bring about a sense of like, ha, huh, you know, openness. Sometimes for people radiating meta towards themselves and then a particular other, it's just a lot. And it's a lot to kind of manage and it takes time to get used to. So there can be times in which like, a little bit like the mind is not really... It's not that straightforward and simple. So there is too much going on. The mind just goes a little bit like, huh. <laughs> and that's actually very understandable. So the Buddha. After years of doing ascetic practices, not only ascetic practices, he practiced kinds of samadhi before that as well, but not ones that are very body-based. Then he remembered, he wasn't the Buddha back then, he was just called Siddhartha, Siddhartha Gautama. Um, he remembered that he sat under um, a rose apple tree in, on a hill, I think, um, in the house where he grew up when his father was away. And on that occasion that he remembered, on that occasion that he remembered, he entered, entered what he later called first jhana, which is a state in which the whole body is suffused with pleasure coming out of samadhi. And remembering that, he, when he entered that when he was a child, he entered that spontaneously. But then he remembered it when he was, how old was he? I don't really know, late 20s probably, he remembered that and he thought, huh, that's a reliable pleasure. That's a pleasure, something that can nourish me and take me onwards. That's a path forward for me. I want awakening. I want deep realization into the nature of things. This samadhi can give me the energy, give me the strength, give me the clarity and lead me in that direction. And then he took on the practice of samadhi especially what he called the practice of jhana. So this practice of samadhi does lead onwards. <laughs> Thank you for practicing here today. See you tomorrow. Um, same time, same place. <laughs> and go well, be well. <laughs>